Um, I wanted to say good evening and welcome to the Historic Academy of Music Theater. Um, my name is Brittany Griffith and I am the Director of Communications at the Academy. And I just wanted to say a few short remarks before we go into the theater and allow you guys to see the space for the first time. I wanted to thank you guys for coming and for supporting the Academy throughout the years. Without your support and without the support of the media, we wouldn't be able to share our message of serving the community with arts and culture or through arts and culture. And without your support, that message would be lost. I wanted to share that I am so excited for you guys to see this space. Whether you were able to come through a soft opening event this past weekend or it's your first time in the space, uh, I believe that you'll you'll walk in and you'll understand exactly why so much work has gone into this space and what and how loving and caring the community has been um, in their support of the renovation. We're really excited for you to see the space for the first time. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so you're actually entering the theater in a bit of an unusual fashion in a non-historic manner, but it allows you to partake of something that we think is very special. One of the first things we'd like to point out is that this wall, that is the historic exterior wall. And these doors were tied to, these are a series of exit doors and they were tied together with fire escapes. And so this, this came out of the house seating chambers. Historically, this black outline, uh, these, these walls, this was the historic African-American entrance into the theater. It set back off of Main Street, and you would have, uh, as an African-American patron, you would have come to this door and gone up, got your ticket, and gone up to the second balcony. We've actually created, uh, for this, this renovation, a modern door. We've distinguished it as opposed from the arcades with a soldier course, and you're, you're coming into the historic space. You're actually passing through a space that was a retail store. It was a hat shop facing Main Street. We'll gather in this space. So you, you see that now you're in the historic theater lobby. This is uh, replica, marble, mosaic, stone tile. Um, the plaster ornament and, and those doors would have opened right to Main Street then. Right. Please come in. We're going to step right on in. These are, these are replica seats from the seats that were installed in 1934 when it was converted to a movie palace. The molds were still available to us. And so we were able to get replica seats, a little bit wider than the modern one, than the old ones, uh, more comfortable for Americans today. On, on the sides, you're looking at, uh, on the side, you're looking at the original plaster work from 1912. Uh, we have had to do some repairs across the proscenium arch where uh, the, the storm in 1993 did a lot of water damage but the sides with the what what historically was called swallow's nest box seats this this is original work fun fact architecturally this side of the theater is two inches lower than this side of the theater uh, so when you when you stand back you'll actually see that the proscenium arch is set level and then we, we split the difference, so one side is up a little bit, and the other side is down a little bit, and it all evens out. Mm -hmm. So if you feel wonky, you're not really. It's just the building. Uh, there were radiator pockets 
in the side that we, we, we restored. So that's where the heat would have come from. Uh, air conditioning, we had uh, blocks of dry ice down in the basement and fans blew air across those blocks of dry ice and in that, that plaster ventilator up there went, exited to the roof exhaust and that was the air conditioning and ventilation for the theater. How would you like to be in here, 1,200 people, 18-inch wide seats with just a fan wafting air over you? Our plaster restoration firm, the, the plaster and decorative paint restoration firm, was, is out of uh, New York. Uh, they came down um, and picked out a lot of the pieces that needed to be restored and replicated because of water damage. The other pieces, they helped us remove the lead paint from those. They actually cast the pieces in Los Angeles, and then they brought them all back together. Uh, it was a marvelous crew to, to see that kind of historic three-coat plaster skill and craftsmanship being used here on such a magnificent building in Lynchburg was really really amazing experience to see. You know, at one time, one out of ten people knew how to plaster, and now hardly anybody knows how to plaster. So all of this was scaffolded. We had scaffolding all the way up to the ceiling, and uh, you could climb all the way up to the ceiling and put your hands everywhere. It was magnificent. So the lighting that you see is actually all... LED lighting, um, and these these linear LED lights, they're 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 just like the size and thickness of a gross grain ribbon that you would put on a hat. They're they're amazingly thin little pieces, and they're so powerful. So that's that's a modern technology that we didn't think that we were going to be able to have in the theater, but thanks to the recession. And a, a tiny little delay, we were able to get uh, LED lights like that. If you, you see the main speaker array is hung from um, a point there. And then there's two more points on either side of it, and then another pair of five points. Those are what we call theatrically strong points. And above them is a whole series of steel beams. And so... Over Dory Smiley's dead body, one day there will be rock and roll music here. And oh, did it? Did it? Oh, I wondered about Dory if she was feeling poorly. Uh, so uh, 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 a per performing company, they'll they'll come in and they'll bring in their light truss and they'll assemble it here on the pit lift, and then. Come along, the electric winches will go up there and hook onto those uh, steel trusses that are up in the attic, and they'll come down and they'll lift up this light truss, and then they'll assemble it with everything they put on stuff like that. And then it'll just rise up in the ceiling and hang there. It's very unusual not to be wearing my hard hat at the Academy. I've, I've had a hard hat on for 10 years, and so tonight there's no hard hat. I, absolutely huge transformation. We have uncovered things that we weren't expecting, um, good things and bad things, and so we've had to repair work that we didn't anticipate, but on the other hand, we found a lot of things that really needed nothing but a little bit of uh, spit and polish and it's, it's come together very well. We can't wait to open the doors and let you see. I think it's the connection to the, to the community. We have so many people who stop us on the street and say, I remember going there, or my, my father used to work there, or uh, I had my first kiss there. You know, these types of things make us realize that it's, it's not just bricks and mortar, it's, it's something invested with community memory. I think she's saying thank you. I, I believe right now she's saying thank you. And um, thanks for not giving up on me, not, not pushing her in the corner. And we're, we're already seeing a marvelous new young generation coming under her spell, 
They, they come in here as, as young people, four years, four years old and six years old, and they love it. And uh, we see a whole new generation falling in love with her. And so many of the people who have driven this project forward, they remembered being here as children. And, and, it, and it does take that um, generational thing to keep up. Uh, any type of arts organization like this moving forward and remaining relevant. She survived so many things. She survived um, the onset of talkies and the onset of uh, a full-on movie conversion and then she survived the flight to the suburbs. Uh, she survived a narrow miss by the highway transportation department. Um, she survived uh, microbursts and earthquakes and tornadoes and storms and snowstorms. She survived all of that as well as um, benign neglect, not, not because people didn't care, but because it was just so difficult to overcome uh, an inertia of, a, of, a, of an age, of a spirit of an age. And so now, um, for a long time, she was a victim of really what was happening across downtowns across America. And so as downtown turned around, her fortunes turned around as well. I, I'm, I'm just thrilled. And it, it really has, uh, it's more beautiful than I could have even imagined. Um, and the, the lobby space, the new lobby space is a beautiful design, totally different uh, than the historic theater, but they really work very well together. Um, so the entire project has really come together to be um, much better than it could have been had we been able to start it earlier for many, many different reasons. But great design team, great contractors, and great construction committee and board and all the folks that have donated over the years, just an awful lot of got, has gone into this, yeah. Now the work really does begin with the operations of the theater itself, as well as uh, what carries on in our other spaces with classes and productions and so forth in our other spaces as well. So it's a, it's a big organization with a big mission and um, a big staff to make it happen. You know, the possibilities I think are, are just endless in terms of what this organization can do in partnering with, you know, area downtown hotels and so forth where it's larger business conferences than we've been able to host in Lynchburg before, but certainly cultural opportunities that we can offer to the adults and children of the region um, that we've just not had an appropriate space to do, do that in before. I will, I will share that I, I, it was just a couple days ago, I was just kind of curious because we've been moving through the space and I went back and watched the, the city film and, uh, and was struck, you know, the, the interviews with, with me up on that first balcony and, and just all the footage of the inside of the theater and I hadn't really seen footage in, in a while uh, and in comparison it's, it's really pretty mind-blowing what they've done, uh, really mind-blowing. It's a really a miracle how long this uh, theater uh, stood the test of time. You know, I, I think one of the measuring uh, sticks for that too is that this, that we're celebrating the integration of the space, that, that we would be uh, re-entering a public space that had sat dormant for 60 years and had not been torn down. I mean, I, I can't even think of another, you know, venue in our city or, or even in our state uh, where, where, where that circumstance would exist that you would have, have that. Um, so it's pretty miraculous. This is really good timing, though, too. I think if, if much more time had passed, the property value on this probably would have been high enough that it, it would have become something else. It's an amazing feeling, um, and, and it's in a moment for us for, to reflect. I mean, there's a lot to reflect about, I think, how far we've come, but I think there's also a lot to reflect in regards to how much further we have to go, too. Um, you know, one of the things that we're finding, even in our soft opening activity, is that, uh, you know, we have, we've had various groups enter the space where we're partners with. And, it's, and we've worked with, for instance, we worked with the AKAs, a, a black uh, historic sorority here in town and had them in the space this weekend. It was really powerful actually to have all of, you know, all of them come into this orchestra level. Uh, but at the same time too, we're, you know, we um, had a predominantly black audience that, that day. Uh, and the night before when we had a community through theater event, we had a predominantly white audience. And so uh, we have a lot of work to do. We, we have an integrated space, but we have a lot, to, a lot of work to do to make sure that we are uh, 
uh, collectively coming together more often, which I think we can do, and we have a lot of hope that we can be that. Thank you to everyone who believed in this and was willing, even despite all of the time and, uh, and seemingly a project that I think many believe wasn't going to happen. Uh, those who, who, who either came back and believed, believed again or, or continued to believe and made it happen. Um, once people come in here and have experiences, they're going to know it was well worth it. And, uh, and for years to come, there'll be activity happening in this space that's going to bring a lot of joy and excitement to a lot of people.